Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing well. We're gonna talk today about real estate. We're gonna talk about a special question that I got off of Twitter. If you haven't seen me on Twitter, check it out. I'm at Economy Ninja on Twitter. And uh, we're gonna jump right into it. It's about FOMO, all right, in real estate. And here it is. I love your YouTube videos. Do you fear that housing prices will remain high because of rate lock FOMO. If you guys don't know what FOMO is, it is uh, an acronym that stands for the fear of missing out. Every homeowner has bought or refi to a loan around 3% or lower. If rates climb, homeowners will not want to move and lose that rate, causing continued supply issues and more. That is an Excellent question. So first off, we're gonna talk about FOMO. See, we are in unprecedented times, whereas we have, for the first time in history over the last couple of years, experienced 0%, zero, nothing, 0% zero rates. When I say 0% rates, I'm referring to the Fed funds rate, okay? And that has caused the mortgage industry to have their rates at record, record lows. Now, that has done a couple of things. It has fueled speculation in real estate. That is why you're, one of the reasons, one, that you are seeing real estate at all-time highs. The second reason you're seeing real estate at all-time highs is because of record low inventory. Now, back in June, on Ju I'm sorry, July, I, I called the top of the market. Now, it sounds funny because people think of when you say top of the market, you're thinking price. I'm not thinking price because there's always a, a period called the melt-up, and that is the FOMO. That is the end of the stage. We saw this in the dot-com boom. We saw it in the 2006 real estate boom. And when I say boom, it was actually the bust because in mid-2006, real estate was actually starting to collapse, even though prices were still going up. Why? Because people were losing their mind, for one thing. And then the second thing, people were stuck, paralyzed in fear because they didn't know what to do next. So. The FOMO is very real and I just experienced it. I'm gonna start doing some videos about it where I went to buy a house and even though I knew it was the top of the market, I didn't care because that purchase was going to put $24,000 a year extra in my pocket because I was about to do something very interesting with that pro property and I was gonna do some videos, but I'm still gonna do those videos. So if you wanna see those videos on how to turn your uh, principal residence into an asset instead of a liability, do me a favor and subscribe. The other thing is, um, when the FOMO happens, yes, people are afraid because right now interest rates are starting to tick up and they're afraid that they're never going to get that percentage on their home. Uh, again, right, the next home. But I want you to understand something that's very interesting. Even with all the institutional investors that are going on right now that we have never seen in the history of the housing market in our country at this pace, we've never seen this many homes being purchased with institutional money. The one thing that is, is a factor is that as interest rates go up with these high prices, fewer and fewer people are able to move up in this world because they do not simply have the wage increase to sustain a higher mortgage payment. You see, let's give an example of a million dollar house now that you know two years ago was 700,000. At 3%, that payment is X. It's probably sitting around, I don't know, $6,000 with zero, zero down. Just throwing out numbers here. The problem is at 3%, it's $6,000. If all of a sudden you wanted to move next door to a house that was, let's say, a little bit nicer, but let's say you were even able to get a new million dollar purchase price next door, and you're like, I'm gonna buy that. I'm just throwing out numbers. Your mortgage, if it goes to 3.5% instead of 6,000, is probably gonna be about 6,500, 6,600. I'm just throwing out numbers, okay? Point being is that you go, well, do I have that extra five or $600 a month in, you know, in my paycheck you know, in my, with my bills and everything to pay that mortgage. Now it would be one thing to be able to sit there and go, yeah, I've got that much money, I'll make that stretch. The problem is in the past, in, and I'm gonna give 2005 to 2006 as an example, in the past, you only had to deal with the mortgage rates going up. See, that's what happened in 2004, the Fed started raising rates and that's when I started liquidating houses. I'm like, people aren't gonna be able to pay their mortgages, especially with the adjustable rate mortgages, right? But even today with all these fixed rates, what's happening is back then when they were raising rates, you didn't see food inflation exploding. You didn't see inflation on anything else really exploding. Even the fuel prices that were rising didn't start until 2008, okay? So my point being is pretty much inflation wasn't existing other than SUVs, in 2005, 2006, and homes, okay? So people could take that chunk. Today, they cannot. Inflation is rearing its head. Everything from lumber, cars, 
I mean, everything, literally, even your Netflix subscription is going up, right? Your Peloton subscription is going up. You can't escape it inflation right now. So people are starting to lose their minds. They're not really thinking rationally. And that's why you know that this real estate collapse is going to be worse than ever before. And that's what gets me excited. That's why I've been preaching, like, sit back, hold off. Now, I know a lot of people go, yeah, but Ninja, you're not listening to yourself. And I go, well, I may be in a different position financially to do that. But I also was buying a place that would put an additional 24000 a year in tax savings and revenue in my pocket. So even in a good um, economy or a bad economy, you should be able to make money. I bought a house at the top in 2005 and I knew it. I knew it because I was actually liquidating all of my homes. We liquidated about 14 properties back then. I kept three and uh, in that year, and I even told Mrs. Ninja, we're buying a house. We bought a house that gave us more options to start a business and I said, we're buying at the top, this thing's gonna fall by 50%. And 50% it fell indeed. I literally paid $500,000 for this house. It was worth $250,000 three years later. But good news, I made $150,000 in cash on a side business there. And I was able to invest it in things like cryptocurrency and silver. So things are going good. My point being is this. Even though it went down to 250, I didn't lose any money. Why? Because I had to live somewhere and I had a fixed interest rate. And my interest, my payment still was less than even going and getting a rental all through that time. And 12 years later, I sold that house for about a $250,000 profit. You see what I mean when I'm talking about throughout the last year, using cycles to your advantage? Regardless of where you are in life, you could you can move around as long as you're moving around to make more money either with income, re, you know, revenue or tax write-offs. That's totally fine, regardless of where we are in the cycle. But really, we want to keep a core position of of our wealth set aside and waiting for this crash so that we can take advantage of the full benefits of a real estate collapse. Hope you guys got something out of this. If you did, please subscribe. With that being said, the Economic Ninja is out.